What's up, everybody? It's your man Moya B. I know. We're back at some more reaction videos. So, yeah, man, we're checking out some World War One, 1916. Um, stuff is getting pretty crazy and intense. Still a diary to it. War One was supposed to have been a short and glorious war. Huh. Mm. But by 1916, a new kind of industrialized warfare had seen the death toll soar into the millions with no end in sight. Naval blockades were beginning to cause shortages of food and fuel across Europe. Mm. Yeah, uh. While thousands of women had entered the workforce, replacing the men sent to fight in their millions. Mm. All sides were preparing for a long war. The war has raged for a year and a half as the Allies continue to battle the Central Powers, recently joined by Bulgaria. At sea, the British maintain their naval blockade of Germany, preventing the import of food and other vital raw materials. Mm. Germany has retaliated with a U-boat blockade of Britain, but has to limit its attacks to avoid provoking the neutral oh, yeah. USA, yeah. <laughs> whose citizens have already been caught in the crossfire. On the Western Front, French, British and Belgian troops are dug in opposite the Germans, both sides trapped in the bloody stalemate of trench warfare. On the Eastern Front, the Russians have ended their long retreat and stabilised the line but their army has suffered huge losses. On the Italian front, Italian troops have launched a series of costly, unsuccessful attacks mm. against strong Austro-Hungarian defences. Mm. While on the Balkan front, the Central Powers have overrun Serbia, whose army is forced to make a bitter retreat through the Albanian mountains. Now, on the 5th of January, Austro-Hungarian troops attack Montenegro. They are delayed at the Battle of Mojkovac, but three weeks later, Montenegro is forced to surrender. Mm. On the Caucasus front, the Russians launch a surprise winter offensive against Ottoman Turkish forces. Six weeks later, Russian troops occupy the city of Erzurum. In April, they capture the Black Sea port of Trebizond. Yeah. Meanwhile, the British transport two motorboats to Lake Tanganyika in Africa. Okay. They finally arrive after a 10,000 mile trip by sea and land mm. it's a and long help the British yeah, seize it control is. of the strategic lake from local German forces. Oh, Lake Tanganyika. The same month in German Cameroon, German troops besieged on Mora Mountain for 18 months finally surrender to the Allies. It marks the end of the Cameroon campaign. We're done. On the Western Front, the Germans unleash a devastating assault on the French fortress town of Verdun. German General Erich von Falkenhayn knows France will defend this symbolic town to the last man. Mm. His plan, in his own words, is to decoy? bleed France white in its defense. With a bleed France it white. Is the strategy of attrition. Verdun becomes one of the most terrifying battles of the war. Wow. A mincing machine. Why? Infantry divisions are destroyed almost as fast as they can be fed into the line. In Britain, one million yeah. men have already volunteered for military service. But the government realises it won't be enough. Britain becomes the last major power to introduce conscription. Mm. Mm. That spring, on the Western Front, British troops are the last to be issued with steel helmets. The nature of trench warfare produces a high proportion of head wounds. Yeah, that The makes German sense. Stahlhelm, the French Adrian helmet, and the British Mark I steel helmet <laughs> offer limited hmm. protection from shell splinters and shrapnel. Neutral Portugal has been cooperating with the British, which seems to offer the best chance of holding on to her African colony, Portuguese Angola. 
Mm. On the 9th of March, Germany retaliates by declaring war on Portugal. <laughs> yes, dang, yeah. On the Eastern Front, Russia launches an attack near Lake Nara to relieve pressure on the French at Verdun. But it's a disaster. There are 100,000 Russian casualties, and the attack fails to divert any German troops. Ooh, from only 20,000 German casualties yeah. in that one. In Dublin, Irish Republicans launch an armed revolt against British rule. It becomes known as the Easter Rising. Yep. And no. is put down after six days of street fighting. Hmm. Oh, revolt. revolt. I don't know this part probably. You say you what? I don't think I knew that some of this. Yeah. In the Middle East, after a five month siege, British forces at Kut surrender. General Townsend leads 9,000 British and Indian soldiers into captivity. Dang. About half later die from starvation or disease. Wow. Britain wants Arab support in its fight against the Ottoman Empire. So it's promised Arab leaders an independent Arab state after the war. Uh. But now Britain and France secretly sign the Sykes-Picot Agreement, planning after the war to divide <laughs> the Middle mm. East into British and mm. French of zones course. of control. Yeah. Unaware of this deal, Hussein bin Ali, Sharif of Mecca, leads the Arabs in revolt against Turkish Ottoman rule. In the Battle of Mecca, his forces seize control of the Holy City. Huh. On the Italian front, Austro-Hungarian forces launch a surprise attack at Asiago. Italian defences give way. Austro-Hungarian troops are poised to break through into northern Italy. That month in the North Sea, the German High Seas Fleet clashes with the British Grand Fleet at the Battle of Jutland. In the only major naval battle of the war, the British suffer heavier losses, but claim victory as the German fleet withdraws and does not re-emerge from its base for the rest of the war. Big push. For the summer of 1916, the Allies have planned major simultaneous offensives against the Central Powers, from East and West. Now they are needed more than ever to relieve Power pressure minute. on the French yeah. at Verdun and the Italians at Asiago. The Russians launch their attack first. On the Eastern Front, General Alexei Brusilov has carefully maintained the element of surprise. His troops break through the enemy lines, in some places advancing 60 miles and mm. taking 200,000 prisoners. This brilliant, though costly, Russian attack achieves its aim, as the Central Powers are forced to redeploy troops from mm -hmm. other fronts to shore up the line. At sea, British cruiser HMS Hampshire, en route to Russia, hits a mine and sinks off mm. Orkney. Among the 650 dead is Britain's iconic Secretary of State for War, Lord Kitchener. Three days later in the Adriatic, Italian troop ship Principe Umberto is sunk by a German submarine. It's the deadliest sinking of the war, mm. wow. with 1,900 lives lost. Wow. On the Western Front, Britain and France launched their major summer offensive, the Battle of the Somme. Okay, yeah. Hopes are high for a breakthrough, but the first day is a disaster. A long Allied artillery bombardment fails to knock out German defences, and waves of British infantry are cut down by machine gun fire yeah. as they advance into no man's land. In the space of a few hours, the British suffer 57,000 casualties, a third of them killed. Wow. It's the worst day in the history of the British Army. Mm. A third of them killed. More wow. attacks yeah. are ordered, and the battle will rage for another five months. Gosh. Romania joins the war. Encouraged by the Russian advance, Romania joins the Allies. 
But despite an initially successful advance into Transylvania, Romania quickly faces a counter-offensive from German, Bulgarian and Austro-Hungarian forces. The Allied force at Salonika tries to support Romania by launching their own offensive towards Monastir. With Serbian troops in the lead, there are small gains, but dogged Bulgarian resistance prevents a breakthrough. On the Western Front, General von Falkenhayn finally calls off the attack at Verdun. It's crazy how Switzerland's the right in the middle. Yeah. The the commander General in the war. promise, Ils ne passeront pas. They shall not pass. They shall not pass. But victory comes at a terrible price. 365,000 casualties. <laughs> Dang. The Germans lose almost as many. 336. Verdun remains one of the bloodiest battles in human history. Wow. What is it, man? This is For his defeat crazy. at Verdun, mm -hmm. Falkenhayn is sacked, and Germany's heroes of the Eastern Front, von Hindenburg and Ludendorff, take command in the West. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, the Battle of the Somme continues. Near the village of Fleur, the British introduce yeah. a new weapon they hope can break the deadlock of the trenches. It is called the tank. Ah, mm. I was wondering when the tank came in. Yeah. The first tanks are too few in number, a real impact. On the Eastern Front, Russia's Brusilov offensive comes to an end. Casualty estimates vary wildly, but it's clear both sides have suffered catastrophic losses. Neither the Russian nor the Austro-Hungarian army ever fully recovers. Huh. On the Italian front, heavy fighting rages throughout the autumn, as Italian forces make repeated, costly assaults against Austro-Hungarian positions along the Isonzo River. The Battle of the Somme comes to an end amid autumn rain and mud. Mm. The Allies have advanced 10 miles at the cost of 600,000 casualties. 10 miles, that's it. Yeah, that's crazy. German losses are about 450,000. The Allies reassure themselves that this is a winning strategy, because at this rate, Germany will run out of men first. Yeah. yeah. Meanwhile, disaster engulfs Romania, as the country is overrun by the Central Powers. Romanian forces suffer a quarter of a million casualties. Yeah. The remnants of its army take position alongside the Russians on the Eastern Front. That winter, Franz Joseph, Emperor of Austria since 1848, dies. He is succeeded by his son, Karl. In Britain, yeah, it was a great, great nephew, Herbert great nephew. Yeah, it was his great nephew. Office, and succeeded by David Lloyd George while General Joffre is replaced as French Commander-in-Chief by General Nivelle, who promises victory through bold, aggressive action. Amid the comings and goings, US President Woodrow Wilson's attempts to mediate a peace settlement come to nothing. Neither side is willing to make concessions. To <laughs> neither side. Yeah, yeah it's uh, kind of possible to get a peace treaty when no one will... Yeah, you know, nobody. Yeah, Come everybody's together. fighting each other, yeah. yeah. I can't agree on anything. Um, it was something they said I forgot earlier I was going to bring up. Slip my mind. Sorry. But yeah, man, it's a lot of... Man, it's a, oh, yeah, they only advanced like 10 miles. Oh, it yeah. Was, it was just crazy. All that fighting and all that time, and they made 10 miles. Yeah, 10 miles. Mm -hmm. That's crazy, man. Just, yeah, nobody even was trying to get no peace treaties and all that mm -hmm. type of stuff. People just kept dying, and, you know, everybody wanted to strut the ego. Well, because I'm sure it's like... You know, for Germany to agree, they want this and this and this land or something. And yep. like France mm -hmm. and England, then they're not gonna. They're like, no, we're not gonna give yep. you yep. all of this. You know, so yeah. we're not gonna agree on it. Yeah, yeah but it's definitely um, a lot of inf um, informative information. Yeah, yeah. It's super like descriptive and lots a lot yeah. of information put into each video. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's just kind of crazy that it's really cool, but like that he breaks down it each year. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, we about to go to the end of this video. If you want to support our channel, support our channel. <laughs> Check out the link in our pinned comments. Leave your video questions and our stream lab. Mm -hmm. Keep the videos under twelve minutes. 
Don't forget to subscribe and thumbs it up. Turn on notifications. It's your man, Mora B. And Nicole. We're going to catch you on the next video. Awesome. Peace and love, baby.